Welcome back folks, I am Technivers. Today we are back in Kira and we are doing something once again a little bit different with our Kira settings in 5 minutes or less video today. We're going to be taking a look at the custom materials. So basically these are material presets. I'm going to show you why they are valuable, how they work, and when to use them. So stay tuned, we're going to jump right into it right now. Technivers channel is brought to you by these fine Patreon supporters. Check us out on Patreon at patreon.com slash technivers. Alright, as I said folks, we are talking about the individual materials and custom material settings for Kira. So, the first thing I wanted to point out is that the best way to use these individual settings is actually in, or these individual materials, excuse me, is actually in conjunction with the basic settings. Um, what's going to happen when you select a material is it's going to give you the chance to override whatever temperature and speed and a couple other variables that you have set for your printer settings with the settings required for that material. And I'll show you exactly what I mean. But basically, you'll notice that you only see these four things here. And these four things you're going to change based on how you want your model's quality to end up but not necessarily based on what you're printing to make the model or the plastic that you're using. So the things that are going to end up changed, we'll take a look here. Let's go into our settings and we can actually go to configure setting visibility and select materials here. Now we have all of these options and there is a quicker way to get at this menu, but I wanted to show you where the main menu for creating, duplicating, importing, and exporting is. If you want to make new materials, this is your menu for that, okay? Um, you can see over here it has a bunch of information about the selected material. Right now I have a 3D Fuel PLA profile selected, or excuse me, material. I keep saying profile, it's a material. There is a difference. Um, and you can see it has a display name, a brand, a material type, and a color. Now this color that you select here is going to be the color that the object is represented in in your prepare mode with that filament selected. So if I go in here and I select a red and close this and select 3D Fuel PLA custom material discard changes. Okay, so now when I load that material, it'll come in red. So a good example of that, this is the quick drop down menu for changing materials. So if I go here, I can select any of these other materials. Let's go ahead and see. See, I know there's some ESUN, PETG, and they have the color denoted here as well. Let's go with purple. And it changes immediately, okay? Um, and that is because I'm changing materials. I'm not changing a property of the material. So if you want to switch between materials, this is the menu to use. However, I will tell you that it is going to do some things to your settings over here. So the basic thing you want to remember is that your profile is for your printer. Things like retraction speed, the actual print speed in most cases, things like that you're going to leave the same no matter what filament you're using. The main things that you're going to change when changing filaments are all shown right here under print settings for that material. So we're actually, let's see, default print temperature, we can go in here. We'll create a new material. And you can see here now I have a custom, custom material back to the information panel and we're going to change the brand. Let's change this brand to Polymaker and, and we'll change, you can see it already changed it there, and we'll change the display name to uh, we're going to be setting up a profile for excuse me, again, not a profile, a material for a new filament that Polymaker sent me that I'll be debuting here in about a month. It is a lovely pink color. Uh, you can see there's also a spot. So this is where, when it's doing your calculation down here of the sliced object, it's going to calculate your cost. This is where it gets the cost. So I'm getting a kilogram, so 1,000 grams. 
uh, which gives me 335 meters of filament, which is what it will use to determine the length and how much it's using there. So, and then this will determine our price. Let's say this is right around $22, which means it's uh, seven cents per meter. Um, and it does all that math right there for you. So you're welcome to enter a description here. Um, but I want to go to the print settings. I'm running this lovely stuff at 210. And my standby temperature, I'm going to put at 195. Because I know that will keep it cold enough to keep it from oozing. But hot enough to keep it from taking too long to heat up. Retraction distance. 5 is a little long. And this is one of those things that... This is one of the reasons that I don't really change my filament, my, my material up here too often. Because the retraction setting that I have set in my profile is generally where I want to keep it unless I'm using a TPU. So having it default to this 5mm is going to change my retraction settings, um, I think, by like 1.5mm. It should be set to 3.5, I think, on my Ender 3 here. Um, and then the speed, I mean, we don't want to change any of that. Fan speed? This is a great thing. This is one of the reasons why you would want to use this because you'd have this off completely if you're printing ABS and that would make sure that you don't have to keep che checking that second setting. Wow, I'm having issues speaking today. So let's go ahead. We have Poly Secret selected. And I want to scroll down here. Now, say I had been using this filament and I switched to something else and I was using, say, a, a little bit lower PETG that I knew printed at 205. Changing the temperature there will have me set up for the new filament that I'm printing, but it keeps all the other settings from this filament. So if I change this filament here, it will change my temperature, it will change my retraction, it will change all of that. Let's go down, I want to see, in travel, retractions enabled. Yeah, my normal retraction distance is 3.5. So, um, and that's what it's set to. So. Since I changed that, it should be fine. My fan speed is 100%. If I go in here and select, let's go back to the eSun. We'll do the black PETG this time. And now here's the thing. If I click keep changes, it's going to leave my temperature at 205. I'm trying to print a PETG now, and I don't want to print at 205. So I have to click discard changes in order for it to pull in the data from that material and set the temperature where it needs to be. And you can see now it's at 245. So um, the materials are nice for switching between a lot of different materials on the same machine. However, I use a lot of different materials on a lot of different machines. So for me, it works better to have a profile that is completely dialed in. And then depending on what I'm using, just go into that profile and change the temperature, the fan, and whether or not I have, say, a draft shield on and a couple of settings like that. That, for me, works better than going through and selecting my printer and selecting my material and then printing the object without double check. It doesn't matter. I have to double check the settings every time to make sure that I don't have something checked that's not supposed to be checked because so many things get changed on a regular basis that I can't just assume that it works the way it's supposed to. So. These are great. They're a great tool to use. Like I said, they work really well in conjunction with just the basic settings. Once you start getting into custom settings and you're changing other things in here, a lot of that is not affected by the material anyway. So there's really no point in changing the material. If you're going to change 8 out of 10 settings in here, you might as well go through them all and make sure they're all set to the filament that you're using. Uh, I know that sounds kind of silly, kind of counterintuitive, and makes the material system completely useless if truth be told um, it is useful for some things and I encourage you to play around with it I also am just telling you to double check the settings after you switch to a material to make sure that you didn't change something you didn't mean to or that something isn't getting changed that's not supposed to because that can lead to bad quality prints and frustration down the road or you might type something in you might have awesome settings you might get an awesome print and you have no idea what you did so you can never duplicate it and that's another reason that i like to just change the settings here because if they're good and i find one tiny flaw in the print i can go ahead and change a tweak in the profile and the rest of the print comes out exactly the same as before and hopefully the problem i found is addressed instead of just randomly picking settings from different filaments and hoping that one of them is set up right. Um, 
that's basically it. I don't use the material tab often. As you can see, I have entered quite a few materials in here. That is because I do test specific materials for people and when they send them to me, I do create a material specific setting for them. Um, but generally I use it that one time, get it set up to where it's printing that material perfectly and then I never use them again. So uh, honesty is the best policy. Don't even bother with the materials unless you're changing printers and materials, or excuse me, unless you're keeping the same printer and changing materials all the time. If you have several printers, it's easier just to go off your print profile and make sure that you check each setting every time you print. That's going to be it for this one, guys. I know it got a little long. I ranted a little bit, and I was stumbling on my words, but you know what? It's early on Saturday, and I should just go back to bed. We'll see you in the next one, and I'm not sure what we're going to be doing the topic on. I know we have a lot more settings to go through, so maybe we'll jump back to doing that. I appreciate it, and thanks again for stopping by, guys. Well, that's it, guys. That's going to wrap up this video. If you've noticed the shirt, the merch is available. Go ahead and check out the Teespring merch link down below. It won't be available on a channel store until I reach 10,000 subscribers, and so far I am just about to hit 5,000. So uh, it'll be a little while, a couple more months before you see this on the actual channel, but they are available now. I have a couple other designs. Feel free to pop over there and check them out and know that any purchase through the Teespring site definitely helps to promote our site here and increase the channel's ability to make videos in the future. So we appreciate all your support. Don't forget to check out the Teespring link. Check out our Patreon link. Leave a like on this video and hit that subscribe button because we have a lot more coming at you in the coming days.